My name is Don Hart. Uh, I am a volunteer wheelchair technical specialist with Latter-day Saint Charities, which is the charitable or the humanitarian arm of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, we've come to St. Lucia to implement what we call a wheelchair project. And first, I would just like to say what a beautiful island this is. We've met some wonderful people here. We are very happy to be here. Uh, I would also like to mention that this is actually a worldwide program. In 2017, uh, the, the wheelchair program operated in 41 different countries, helping 49,000 individuals with wheelchairs and other mobility devices. But back to St. Lucia. Uh, the way we manage our programs is it, they are uh, a, there's two pillars to our program, and the first one is the donation. This project consists of 138 wheelchairs that were designed by Latter-day Saint Charities. They're a fine wheelchair, and there are three different types, standard, active, and all-terrain. This is a standard wheelchair. It's good for home use, for office use, hospitals, anywhere where there's a hard surface. It's a good wheelchair for that, sidewalks. It, it works just fine. I'd like to point a couple of features out on this wheelchair. This has solid tires as opposed to pneumatic tires that we have on the other two types of wheelchairs. These tires will give great service for several years, but they will eventually deteriorate. They can easily be replaced with a pneumatic tire or an air-filled tire because there's already a pre-drill hole inside of the rim for this so that the stem of the inner tube can, can go through that hole uh, and then it can be just replaced by a bicycle tire. Once you take the cushion out, this chair collapses just like this so that it can easily be put in the trunk of an automobile or a taxi. To your left is what we call the active wheelchair. This is a wheelchair generally used by individuals with good upper body strength, good shoulder strength. They're very agile. Uh, they, uh, they can turn uh, very quickly. Uh, some people use them to play wheelchair basketball in. They're that, they're that agile. But because of the construct of the frame of this and the all-terrain wheelchair, these do not collapse in the center like the standard wheelchair does. But what it does do is you can see this pin right here on this wheel. If you depress this pin right here, this wheel will come off, as will the one on your right, uh, so that it will reduce the, the uh, profile of the chair, making it easier to transport. It's not going to be as easy to transport as a standard, but it still facilitates movement because it will lower the profile. The, the third type of wheelchair that we have is an all-terrain. This is a very rugged wheelchair. And one of the differences you see is the, the front wheels are further out to give this much more stability. Uh, but uh, this is designed for uh, uh, off-road use, off the solid surface use. For those that live in the countries, this is an ideal wheelchair. But this one, again, requires a, a significant amount of upper body strength uh, to operate. But it's a great wheelchair for those that are in those circumstances. I would also like to show you uh, that the, each wheelchair that we provide comes with a bag that uh, consists of various items. Uh, each wheelchair comes with a tire pump. There we go. It comes with an assortment of straps if needed to help uh, the individual be stable in the chair. It comes with an instruction manual uh, that provides information on not just how to use it, but how to maintain this wheelchair. And it comes with an assortment of tools that are also needed to maintain it and also a, a repair kit for the tires should they get a flat tire. Along with this project, uh, we shipped uh, 101 other mobility devices. Not everybody needs a wheelchair, but may need some assistance with mobility. Right here is a quad cane. Uh, it has four feet on it for greater stability. A lot of the elderly like the quad cane. Of course, the, it can be uh, raised up to a greater height. Uh, we also have a number of regular canes with this shipment. This would be a standard set of crutches. Uh, and this would be the forearm crutch. Uh, again, to aid those that need an assist with mobility. And right here we have finally the uh, walker. Uh, we have a, a number of walkers that were associated with this uh, project as well. Uh, what we have done here is the second component of the program is the training po component, which means that we brought uh, three certified therapists with us. Two are physical therapists, one is an occupational therapist, and one technician. 
the three therapists are training three therapists that are under the umbrella of our partner organization, which is the National Council of and for Persons with Disability here in St. Lucia. They have provided three clinicians or assessors who we trained yesterday who are conducting assessments today through the end of the week. These assessments determine if an individual qualifies for a wheelchair, and if they do qualify, what type of wheelchair, and after the type is determined, the necessary adjustments so that they're comfortable for the user and will provide years of, of, uh, of use. Uh, th th this is uh, Jo, Joanne, and she has been responsible for training, uh, in part responsible for the three individuals who were uh, trained yesterday. And she's providing supervision to this gentleman right here who's actually conducting the assessment to again ensure that they get the appropriate type of wheelchair that size correctly. So that you just gave my story. Yeah. So we're here because we want to make sure that if the, if somebody's being provided with a wheelchair, that it is the correct wheelchair because you can cause more damage if somebody's in a chair that isn't correct. So we're here because we're bringing this knowledge to locals so that we don't have to keep coming back, so that the resource is here. So that's the model for this. We come in as trainers, we're physical therapists or occupational therapists. We train local people with different backgrounds. We do, we do this all over the world. And then they have the resources and the knowledge to then provide that to somebody who's getting a new chair. And they provide that information because the end user is the most important. The person in the wheelchair needs to understand the wheelchair, needs to understand how to take care of themselves, how to take care of the wheelchair, so that it'll last a long time because wheelchairs, they're just aren't enough in the world for everybody that needs a wheelchair. These wheelchairs can last uh, for a, a, a many, many years if they're properly maintained. Along with each wheelchair comes a toolkit. So far we've done about six chairs. And we're going to try and do nine this morning, so we have three more appointments that we're going to be uh, working with people. Um, depends. They're all different because some chairs are more complicated and need more adjustments. Some chairs are real simple. Depends on the, the person's uh, situation. If they're taller, we have to make this higher uh, from the ground. And we have to move the tire off, change the um, wheel, wheel locks. So there's, it just really depends on what the, what the original setup was. It's much faster if we take it straight from the box, but when they're already built, we have to unbuild and, and then change the position so that they get a really good fit. And how was St. Lucia chosen? Uh, first, I would mention that everybody on our team are volunteers, unpaid volunteers, uh, that do this out of the pure love of service. Uh, much like many of the people that we've encountered here in St. Lucia. Uh, the couple that lives here, we have a full-time uh, missionary couple here in St. Lucia, Elder and Sister Fielden, who notified us. My wife and I were responsible for managing Latter-day Saint Charity wheelchair donations throughout the Caribbean. They notified us and they said that they would like to sponsor a program here in St. Lucia. That started the process. And ultimately, and they found uh, President James and his organization, we have found them to be a credible, reliable partner who will then be managing this program after being here a week of training and the uh, clinic, clinic process that you see in the background. So that's kind of how the process evolved. Mufilas James, President, National Council for Persons with Disabilities. The NCPD is extremely grateful to have partnered with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints which assisted us in receiving this large donation of wheelchairs, crutches and mobility devices from LDS Charities, an international organization. So these wheelchairs arrived last week and we are here for one week at the City Hall where we are undertaking an intensive assessment exercise in order to assign these wheelchairs to clients. Many times what happens is that when donations of wheelchairs are received, you find agencies just randomly distribute them to persons. In this program, the Latter-day Saints have come with a team of specialists who have trained a group of six St. Lucians to serve as technicians and assessors. It's very important that persons physically show up so we can assess them to determine what type of wheelchair they are to be assigned. 
because more harm can be done if persons receive a wheelchair which is not suitable to their weight, to their size, to their level of daily activity. So this is why it's very important that persons come to us where we will assess them and determine which kind and size and type of device they need. In future, our team of technicians and assessors will be able to go out into communities. We'll be able to go to people's homes to do this assessment and we can bring the wheelchairs to them. But for this donation and for this one week window that we have, knowing that wheelchairs are always in short supply in St. Lucia and always on high demand, it's very important that persons call us, set an appointment with us and we will accommodate them. We will actually have monthly dialogue with the organization. They will provide monthly reports to us how it's going. We will also follow up. Uh, we, will do an we will look at some of their assessment sheets to make sure that the assessments that are done this week under the supervision of our three certified therapists, that that same high quality continues. And we'll do that through periodic checks. But we are confident, because of the feedback I've gotten from our therapists, that the three individuals that we've trained here are going to be outstanding. So we are confident that the quality of the assessments, we also like to follow up the individuals to make sure that the wheelchairs are holding up. Because if there's any design modifications that need to be made, we're interested in knowing that as well. Just double checking all the nuts. That nobody get damaged. I do prosthetic legs. Oh. That's what I have also. Oh, really? Okay. Our organization is pleased to continue to partner with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They have already partnered with us for us to commence making modern prosthetic legs right here in St. Lucia. They have linked us with a technician in the U.S., with the materials, with the resources, and as we speak, materials are being shipped to St. Lucia, where we will commence a modern prosthetic limb lab. In this wheelchair program, we do have to submit monthly reports. When our team from the U.S. have left, they leave at the end of the week, we do have to continue submitting reports to them to account for every device here, and how we assessed persons and how we deemed who got wheelchairs, crutches or mobility, other mobility devices. I needed a wheelchair and they helped me to get one and, and I appreciate very much. It means a lot to me. I could move around different stuff places on my own. So I very appreciate it. Yeah, I give thanks to them.